Welcome back to Timberborn, everybody, and welcome back to the Iron Isles. I hope you're having a good one because we have another crisis on our hands. In the last episode, we sorted out the food problem. It turns out District 2, however, this one that you can see sort of in front of us, it doesn't have water. They've run out of water in the middle of a drought, and it's kind of a problem. Now, I will admit I'm being a little bit dramatic because a good dramatic YouTube intro is very healthy for a channel these days. They have 29 water in storage, so it's not the end of the world, but for a district that has 48 beavers, one of which is homeless and we need to deal with that, and one and a half days of drought left, that's not ideal. Although admittedly, we did just get a delivery of water from District 1, so it's maybe, it's maybe not the end of the world at all. Maybe this district will be fine, but the point I'm getting at is that I'm kind of surprised that this space ran out so quickly. I feel like it usually doesn't, so I'm wondering what's maybe changed there, if anything. It's possible that I just haven't paid attention and that it has done this before, but regardless, what I've decided to do is go ahead and prioritize the construction of these water pumps up here. The problem, though, is this district doesn't have any lugs, so we're going to have to wait and we're gonna have to hope that we can build these in a decent amount of time. Probably not for this drought, but hopefully for another drought, which will inevitably come around in the future. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I have also set up a construction task for a couple of grills up on this hill because this district is starting to stockpile potatoes. We have 264 raw potatoes in storage. So going ahead and turning those into food would be great, but obviously that is also going to need logs. So we kind of need to fix that problem, which sort of has me thinking that maybe, maybe we don't need all of this farmland. Maybe we could get a forester, maybe two, maybe not two, but maybe a forester and a lumberjack over here wouldn't be such a bad idea. I'm not really too sure. We are probably going to do that or... We could do it up here. We absolutely could do it up here, but to do that, we're going to need more metal blocks and more lugs and more planks. So we're probably a little bit of a ways away from doing all of that, but honestly, it's okay. At least we're not starving, which is the important thing. And I mean, District 1, let's be completely honest, 2,800 food, 2,300 of that being bread. That's not bad. Now, you might have noticed that 2,800 food in District 1 is fine. We have 3,200 overall. That means that... Oh, wow. <laughs> These guys are actually... Oh. Oh, this... 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 This is bad. <laughs> oh, man. We really... Uh, we really need some logs in here is what we need. We... Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. That's terrifying. Can I have a look at my distribution limits for logs here, please? Why are we not moving them? 500. Let's bring that down to like 200. We don't need that many logs. Well, we'll start moving logs back out to this district so they can start cooking things because good lord, they're going to start dying. They have no food. But on that note, speaking of no food, District 3 is down to 420 food. So what I've done is I've built myself a little bridge and we're going to turn this island into some additional farmland and maybe some other things as well. But I just need the extra farmland for potatoes and wheat and all that good stuff. And that's what we're gonna do. So that island's gonna be cleared off. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but honestly, that's totally fine. Uh, we also have the smelter up and running. So this district is now making its own metal blocks, which can eventually be put towards this engine and then eventually be put towards the, uh, the golems. But for now, it's just going to be a slow process because this thing's not actually getting as much power as it needs. It's only getting 93%. So long story short, we're going to be waiting a while for the metal blocks, but we'll get it eventually. And also, interestingly, we have 21 unemployed beavers. We have six unemployed, or sorry, six vacancies. Eight of them are in this district. So let's actually migrate this population. One, two, three, four, five, six of them to district one. And that actually did get rid of all the vacancies that we had. So that's that's also going to deal with the food situation going on in here. And also we do have a homeless beaver in District 2. And a bunch of them not really knowing what to do. So let's migrate some population from District 2 to District 1. We'll go 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. Just because we can. 
we still have 17 confused beavers that don't really know what to do, but we have no vacancies, we have no one that's homeless, and we do have another house on the way. So as logs start arriving in this district, hopefully we can start building all of this. Hopefully we can keep the food production going, which it is. We have water, we have food. So they will probably survive this drought, but things are getting a little bit... Things are getting a little bit wild. I don't, well, I don't know if wild... I don't know if wild is the word I want to use to describe how... Man, let me tell you, <laughs> I was playing Timberborn last night and things got pretty wild. <laughs> let me tell you. That's a sentence no one has ever said. <laughs> that's that's one of those sentences that you just you're never gonna hear anywhere. Man, let me tell you, things got pretty wild in Timberborn. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, <laughs> you won't believe it. That's uh, there's a YouTube title in there somewhere. There, <laughs> I played Timberborn at three in the morning and Satan arrived at my front door. IRL. <laughs> what am I doing? I just I should I wanna I wanna clarify something. I recently stopped drinking as many energy dr uh, energy drinks as I used to because I'm, you know, I'm 29 years old now. I'm trying to not, you know, I I I'd like to live. So I'm trying to slowly adjust my diet. And I'm trying to slowly, you know, get off of things like energy drinks and start drinking more water. And it's not going very well because I had my first energy drink today in like three or four days. And I don't know if it's obvious that it's kind of hit me like a truck, but it has hit me like a truck. <laughs> Now, in other news, the drought is over, water is returning, and no one died of starvation or of thirst. So, that's nice. That's always that's always a positive when no one dies of starvation or of thirst. It's also going to be good because it means that uh, power is going to come back to District 2, which means that metal production is going to get going again, which means that the hopefully the golems won't take forever to build. And, uh, why? I feel like this guy hasn't actually produced anything. No, there is there is a metal block in this district, and I think it is about to be delivered here. Yeah, there's two metal blocks there. Nice. So, yeah, they are... Oh, there's four. Oh, look at them go. Okay. Well, that's nice. They're actually sort of doing it. They're slowly, they're slowly getting there, which is great news. So, that's great. All of this is going to get up and running again as well, which is lovely. I am actually very excited to see if we can get some golems. I don't know if we're going to get some golems going today, but at least getting one of these engines going would be an accomplishment as far as I'm concerned. That's that's kind of my, that's my goal right now. I'm also keenly aware that it seems like food has gone down again. I just, I don't know why we don't have enough potatoes here. I really don't. I feel like this district's honestly too big. I almost wonder if splitting District 1 into, like, two districts would make a lot more sense. Or if just going and, like, taking over a massive chunk of land, like, down here and turning it into a big farm or, like, all of this or whatever. Like, this, this space here would be a great island for a district. Or this, oh my god, this one would be so good. This would be such a good island for a district. I don't know how I would get there, though. I'd need a bunch of districts in between to actually get over there. I also want to use uh, one of these things at some point. This is what I can put one of the, what do you call it? These efficient mine things. I think they go on these. And that's a source of scrap metal. Much like this island is a source of scrap metal. Or, oh my god, this island is huge. There is still a lot of land that I could play around with is what I'm realizing. There is, yeah, there is a, oh my god. Like up here would be so cool build around this like canyon and have stairs and stuff oh my god i'm getting so many ideas <laughs> i am getting so many ideas and i really i really shouldn't i really shouldn't because they're kind of silly i mean they're not they're not silly i could do that but it's just it's gonna take a minute now i will say there is some good news in district two well two bits of good news number one is all of this harvesting that's going on is kind of fantastic and it's giving me some hopes about this district it's got a lot of potatoes and hopefully we can turn that into a lot of food but we are also getting some extra water from the deep water pump that we have right here and this one is not too far away in fact it should be built in the morning so we'll be doubling the water production of district 2 which is exactly what we're looking for so that's going to turn out really well uh, food production in District 2 is still pretty terrible, but that's also because there's no logs in that district. 
and District 3 is pretty low as well. So hopefully we can figure that out. In fact, let's prioritize constructing this uh, farmhouse. And let me see, does this district have logs? It doesn't have that many either. Do we have a log delivery coming down here? We do. Do I have distribution limits on that? Logs, zero, up to 100. Interesting. Oh, no, that's the District 3 limit. Wait, no, that's that's actually okay. Uh, let me look here. Distribution limits for District 1. Logs, minimum, minimum 200. So we are shipping them out still. I guess we just probably have... We have a lot of deliveries going on. We have eight delivery routes, so... It's not necessarily going to be all the time that that happens, but yeah, it would be nice if we could figure that out. But anyway, let's go ahead and plant some crops here. I'm thinking we will just go for potatoes. So I'm going to try and just cover pretty much this entire space in uh, in potatoes, and we'll hope for the best. I think this guy has coverage everywhere except for right there. That's a little bit of a pain, but okay, let's uh, let's cancel that one. And yeah, so that's going to be an entire island of potatoes. That'll be pretty great. We've also got these stairs here, so we're clearing out these trees. We can clear out these trees at some point as well. And we can grow more stuff on this island. So that's pretty good. Even if uh, parts of the island don't have any water. And yeah, I'm going to have to irrigate this at some point as well. That's going to be fun. But that's, that's a later thing. Oh my god, this is going! Wait a minute, what?! Hold on, no way you are working at 67% right now. Hold on a minute, we're actually making golem parts. Oh my god, <laughs> that's actually really cool. Oh wow. And then what's this? This is the assembler, right? So, oh it has limbs in there. Oh that's really cool. That's really cool, I love that we have this now. I mean, I, I don't know, is that, that's, that's, no, I, I don't know, I, I don't know what golems look like, so this is going to be really cool. Uh, this guy's coming along really nicely too, this guy's doing its thing. Oh man, I'm actually so pleased about this, and this thing's coming along, like, this isn't too far away from being, being, uh, done either, so, we might get golems today, which would be huge. Oh no, hold on a second, this thing is actually working now. It's only a 53% efficiency with power input and all that, but it's actually working. We're making a golem right now. That's... That's actually kind of cool, man. That looks really, really good. This is also super close to being finished, so that's... Oh, that's exciting. That's really... That's really exciting. Uh, what's also exciting is this island is so close to being cleared off, so we're going to have a lot of... Uh, a lot of farming going on out here. I did build a second farmhouse because I thought that would be a pretty great idea. And the food situation in general, it's improved on this island. It could still be better, or in this district. And uh, it's sort of improved down here. The water situation, at the very least, has gotten better in District 2. So, we've got that going for us. Uh, I just kind of feel like, honestly, this district could probably use some more farmers. I don't think just four farmers will cover everything we're trying to do here. Although we do still have a lot of potatoes, so we've got that going for us. I'm I'm still wondering if we should just build like another forester and another lumberjack. I kind of feel like that would be a good idea. Although I'm curious to see or what the uh, the radius is in a lumberjack. If I was to put one like in here anywhere, if I put one there, it's not great. Uh, if I put one in here though, I imagine it would be okay. And then we could maybe have a forester go out there. Honestly, I think we're going to have to do that. I really do. So, oh man, I don't, I don't like getting rid of stuff. I don't like getting rid of stuff, but I'm going to have to do it. So mark some resources, mark you, mark, uh, you, mark these guys and mark those guys. So mark all of that for demolition. Let's prioritize clearing that out. And then what we'll do is we'll have a little path that comes through here. We'll have a, uh, a lumberjack flag right there, and we'll have a forester right here. And then we can set the forester to clear all of this space. We can try and build some stairs. Though we have some stairs over here, so it should be okay. Uh, so a little path right there. We're looking for a lumberjack right here. That coverage could be better, but it's not, it's not awful. And a forester can go right here, and that coverage is also not necessarily terrible. 
it could be better it could be worse honestly i think what we could do is just maybe mark these resources for demolition as well we'll get some extra stairs in there and that'll just extend the coverage a teeny tiny little bit and that should be pretty good for us so that'll hopefully work out that'll hopefully be okay it'll hopefully be a thing that's uh that's good for us so we'll get some stairs we'll get the path here and then a path right there we'll also prioritize the stairs because we can and uh, i suppose what we'll do for the time being is we'll go and say that we want wood cutting to be i guess from here the entire way back to there so this guy as well and uh, we'll sort of do all of these guys as well and that can just be the forester's space too so we can basically go and say once all this is chopped down at the very least we can go and say you know replant this entire space maybe not those bits up there but this will be another source of this will be another, de another decent source of wood for the district which is something that they're struggling with so i think it's probably a good thing oh now look at this we've got the entire golem factory going which means this guy down here is gonna take still 36 hours, but it's at 100%, or it was until everyone, you know, clocked off for the night. That's really good news, though. Uh, what's also pretty cool is that this guy is up and running, so we can eventually, I'm gonna let the forester clear out all these trees first, but eventually we can go ahead and start replanting some stuff here, and it is gonna help this district out. So I think it's safe to say that the, the water crisis in District 2 has been sorted. The food crisis in District 1 is no longer a food crisis. There is still a bit of a food crisis in District 3. And District 2 is, I want to say, improving. I, I want to say it's getting a little bit better. I think having the extra lumber is going to go a very long way. I think having the extra grills is going to go a very long way as well. And really all we need now is just a bit of extra... I guess power which is where this engine's gonna come in so eventually we'll get that going uh we don't need to be moving well actually we do need to be moving metal blocks to uh to this district i'm an idiot if i think otherwise uh so yeah we're still gonna need still gonna need metal blocks coming down here but that's okay we uh oh my god i am so so excited about this thing i don't even know how how, how it works i don't know what to do with it but i'm so excited i'm also really excited to see this uh this engine come together i think that's gonna be kind of huge getting all of this production going oh and i forgot to mention i'm building this totally forgot to mention we're doing a large warehouse which honestly i think it's gonna look really cool right there so that's 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 a thing that we're now gonna have in uh this space and i've also been thinking that a way in which i could potentially solve some of the issues with some of the districts is by just moving a bunch of the buildings off of the land so, for example, all of this housing, in theory, I could just build a bunch of platforms or levees or whatever and just put the housing on the water. That might not be a terrible idea. It really might not be. Also, what are you doing? You need to get out of there. That's, that is not, no, get, get that, get that thing out of there and get, uh, get you out of there as well. And that, I think, is going to be pretty much everything in this island cleared. So, clear you, clear you. And then what do I want to grow here? I mean, we're doing potatoes around the entire island right now. Do we have an excess of wheat flour? We kind of do. We could probably just use more potatoes. So I think, honestly, that's what we're going to do. This is just going to be an island of... Uh, I've made Ireland. Uh. <laughs> I've, made, I've just made Ireland. <laughs> I can say that. I live here. That's. I'm allowed to make that joke. I've just, I've just made Ireland. It actually kind of... Like if you flipped that, it actually kind of looks kind of the shape of ireland oh man <laughs> how, have I, how have i done this how, out of all the islands i could have covered in potatoes it had to be the irish one it it had to be the irish looking one now in other news we have a drought coming in in just under three days which is going to be day 14 which makes me think it's going to be I, I don't know how many days are in a cycle i think it's 24 so it's going to be a seven day no it's going to be a 10 day drought oh god okay that that could be a problem if it oh man that could be a problem i'll tell you what i want to try and do and this might not work at least not for this drought but i want to improve our water storage in pretty much every district so i want to get more large water tanks and the way i think i'm gonna go about doing this is by building some platforms so just a little something something like this uh here we can go for here 
as well. I might not do that one, actually. I think two more tanks for this district should be just fine. So a large water tank here and right there will help these guys out once those get built. And uh, I might extend that over at some point, but for now, this will be just fine. For District 3, they already have two large water tanks, so they don't necessarily need more, but I'm also not necessarily against giving them more water tanks, just because I can. And honestly, I could probably put them somewhere that just looks a bit better than what we have going on. So, let's, I guess... I'm tempted to sort of extend off of here, or sort of back this way. It doesn't really, it really doesn't matter where I build them, but I just... I want them somewhere that looks kind of cool. Which, honestly, back here looks kind of cool, to be to be completely honest. We could do two of them back here, if we really wanted to. That would be... That would be an option. We could do more than two of them back here, if we also wanted to. There's no reason to just do two of them, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be... That would be somewhere we could put them. Or I could just stop being an idiot and just... Well, actually, no, I could build them by storage. I could get a bunch of them in here, actually. So, what if I did... Um, how many can I, can I get? So, that would be one. That's two, that's three, and that's four? I feel like that's too much. I want to say that's too much. But at the same time, the whole point of this game is, is, is water. So, I feel like it's also simultaneously not too much to uh, just have ridiculous numbers of water tanks. And I think my goal is going to be to fill these things. So, we'll go ahead and do this. We'll get rid of that path that I don't want. And I also don't like that it's not symmetrical. I oh, I'm gonna do that. I'm I'm yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make it look better. In fact, what I'm gonna do is build a totally custom space for water and gathering water and all that good stuff. So let's figure out what we're doing. I guess is uh, is what we're gonna have to do here. We have two sets of stairs that come down here as well, which is pretty cool. So we could sort of use that to our advantage. Uh, what I think I'm gonna do though is basically something oh this is gonna look terrible whatever i do <laughs> this is this is going to look pretty pretty terrible essentially but i i guess we could do this because that's going to give us a connection across the water as well which i think is going to be kind of important and then what i can do is this this and and this and that'll be some water pumps and then on this side we go and do this and that will be some water tanks so we have a path that goes through here. We have some stairs that come down here. We'll connect on this side as well eventually once that uh, pump's gone. And basically all we need to do is deep water pumps one, two, and three. And then large water tanks one, two, and three. And I guess that works. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be a good ratio or not. But what I can also do, I guess, is extend this around i don't i don't know that i love that layout but i think it'll do the job so that's that's what we're going to do for water in this district it's also kind of out of the way which is probably for the best and then for district one i mean it's doing okay it has 1500 water but i don't really see any reason not to make it a bit better in terms of how it stores and handles water so i mean we have these tanks over here we have these tanks over here why don't we just, I guess, build sort of a little water collection space down here? It wouldn't necessarily hurt. So, oh, how am I going to make this? Uh, let's do this and this. We'll have a path that sort of comes down the middle. We could do another bridge if we really wanted to. Not that we need one, but I could, I could do one. Uh, and then that's a tank, and that's a tank, that's a tank, and that's a tank. That's a tank. That's actually a couple of tanks right there. Um, hmm. That might be too much. That, that definitely, definitely might be too much. I also kind of want to get rid of you because I don't like that it's, uh, got that little overhang there. Uh, we'll do this. And I don't know if I want that to connect straight through. I don't know if there's any reason to. But my thinking would be bring this sort of path around here. Bring a path straight down the middle. I guess we could do this. And I guess my idea is essentially large water tanks would go here, 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 and here, and in these spaces as well. And that's just a massive amount of water storage right in the middle of the district, which is maybe a bit much. 
Again, I, I don't know if it's necessary, but it is also in line with the housing, so it looks kind of cool in that sense. It's just potentially completely unnecessary. I also want to point out that we actually do have a golem called Coghead 1, Age 2, District 1, currently unemployed. Basic needs are energy and the control tower is, is optional. That's kind of cool, man. That's kind of really cool. I am actually kind of pleased with that. We actually got a golem, and I think we're making another one over here as well. We also have this second engine, so I'm going to go ahead and turn all of these buildings back on because I think we do now have the power for all of them. We absolutely do. Oh, that's really cool. That is uh, that is actually really, really cool, and I'm really, really pleased with that. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let me get a uh, district connection right there. This will get built eventually, I guess. Uh, though I would like to prioritize this because I'd like that path through there a little bit quicker, please. Just so I don't forget to connect it. And uh, this down here is probably going to take a while. But honestly, that's that's kind of okay. I'm not really too worried about it. There we go. So we got that path going. I honestly don't know what to do with golems. I, I know there's certain things that only golems can do, I think. I, well, I don't actually know. I, I don't know if that's true. I, I, I think there's certain things that only, only golems can do. At least I think I read that somewhere. I actually have no idea. <laughs> I, I really don't. I feel like I should know that. I almost, oh yeah, isn't the, yeah, the dirt excavator. A heavy duty mining rig for collecting dirt. Golem only. Only golems are allowed to work in this workplace. And then a dirt pile is a reinforced container for holding mounds of dirt. And a terraforming station is golem only and it lets me terraform. So terraforming is is like golem only, which is fair enough. Okay. Well, I think in that case, we should start working towards that, which means we're going to need the wood workshop, which needs power which is interesting, but it needs a plank, it needs sap, and three hours for reinforced wood. So we'll go ahead and unlock it. We have 14,000 science, and uh, this thing's pretty cool looking. I guess we also have a good amount of sap somewhere. Yeah, 934. So this thing should probably go into this space. These guys are all connected together as well, so... I mean, I could, in theory, get the wood workshop kind of in here somewhere which might be interesting. I don't really I don't really know exactly where I'd put this thing. Uh, I do need it to be connected though. It, it obviously it does need to have power. So maybe back here wouldn't be the uh, the worst place in the world for it or sort of in here. I don't really want to block off this waterway too much more. So let's do Well, I guess we'll get rid of some of the wheat. Right? So we'll go ahead and mark some resources for demolition as we've done so many times. Uh, mark these resources for demolition. And then what we need to do is bring some platforms out like this. And that's going to give us access to the door. We'll bring some platforms sort of down here. Get a little platform right there as well. We can mark those resources for demolition. And that'll give us a way around this entire space. So let's prioritize the resources at the very least. And I think that might, well, no, it's, yeah, it's not the only construction project in this area, but uh, I think it probably should be a priority. Oh, that actually looks really, really cool right there. So, yeah, that's going to be our wood workshop. I don't know if we're going to have enough power to actually supply this thing. If not, we'll get another engine in here. It's not the end of the world. We can totally manage to do that. And uh, that'll give us the reinforced wood, which means we can start working towards other things, such as terraforming, which would be very exciting. I also just kind of love that we have a golem. I, I really do. I think that's that's really, really cool. It's uh, It looks really cool as well. I don't know what he does. He, where is he? He's, he's down He's down at the bottom here. Where is he right now? Let's see. What are you, what are you, what's he doing? Where is he? There he is. Oh, he's hauling stuff. Look at him. Oh, he's so good. He's so quick as well, which is kind of fantastic. So that's actually, that's actually pretty good. That's, that's really, really cool. He's just working as a hauler. That's, I love that. <laughs> I actually, I actually love that. That's so good. And actually we have two of them now. We have Coghead too. And I'm curious about something. I, I want to see, do they rest? 
so when all the other beavers go to sleep, what do the golems do? Because obviously, I mean, he's, he's doing nothing right now. He's unemployed. He's kind of just running around. All the other beavers are going to sleep, and the golem is chilling, it seems. I mean, that's fair enough. What's golem number one doing? What's coghead number one doing? He is... He's still hauling stuff. Oh, so they just work around the clock, and it's a five-day drown. Okay, so that's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, we didn't manage to get these large water tanks going, but we do have these two extra pumps, so this district should be fine. Uh, district 3 has typically always been fine as well. And uh, District 1, I mean... Wait a minute, workplace. Wait a minute. Unlock this workplace for golems? <gasps> oh! Wait, just... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh! Now, hold on a... Oh! <laughs> I'm not making any sense. Sorry. I've just realized something. I think I've just realized something. Hold on a minute. <laughs> now, oh my god. Okay. Unlock the bakery for golems. Right? So set those two to be golems. Does that mean that the bakery can now work around the clock? Because if it does, that is huge. I need to unlock every building for golems. The grist mills, the water pumps, everything needs to be unlocked for golems. And then eventually power. Oh my god, I can. Re oh, ho, ho, ho. wait. Now, wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Can I set this? T I can set this. I can set the scavenger flag to be golems. Can I then go and set this to be golems? Yes. Can I then go and set the golem factory to be. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you can totally set up a production line wherein you are using golems to make more golems. That is my goal, um. <laughs> That's, I'm totally, oh my god. I'm gonna replace my beaver population with robots, because of course I am. And let's not forget, I can get a control tower. And if I do this, it will, I send out a signal to nearby golems to boost their performance. So if I unlock the control tower, which is a very cool looking building, it's not that much to make it. I could place it in here and that's going to boost the performance of the golems working at the bakeries. Now tell me that's not an amazing idea. Because frankly, it's an amazing idea. I'm going to get rid of that path right there. I'm going to put a control tower right in the middle. I'm going to prioritize that. And it's going to be amazing. Oh my god, does it need power? Hold on a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It doesn't. Oh, but it does consume three science per hour. So, oh man. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I'm actually, I'm actually Skynet. I'm actually Beaver Skynet. And I'm so okay with it. And now that all the beavers are leaving work, I just want to check. And I, I was right. The golems just keep working. So the golems are just going to keep working through the night. So bread production is going to continue. So, oh my god, that's amazing. That's actually, <laughs> it's actually amazing. I can put golems in the farms as well. Oh my god. <laughs> no way. No way I'm doing this. No way I am doing this. That is, that is incredible. That is actually <laughs> incredible. That is so good. Oh, man. I also love that the lights go uh, blue on the buildings when the uh, when the golems are there. That's a really, really cool little touch. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of wild. That is, uh, <laughs> is actually, actually kind of wild, man. Oh, oh, I forgot this was this was going to happen. I forgot to irrigate this island. That's a bit rough. Those poor farmers have nothing to do right now. I mean, that's, that's fine, I suppose. It's, it's not ideal, but, uh, man, I, <laughs> I actually cannot get away from 
just in my head, I'm like, man, golems are kind of amazing. <laughs> that's kind of a big deal. Oh, that's nuts. That is actually kind of nuts. What else can I put them to? What what else can I get them working working at? I guess I could get them working at the golem assembler. Let them assemble other golems, for example. I think that would be kind of cool. I Can I put them in the district center? I actually can, which is wild. I mean, I guess I can put them in any building, right? They can go anywhere because, I mean, they're going to have to kind of work anywhere or everywhere. That's, uh... <laughs> That's actually wild. That's actually kind of crazy. Okay. I don't I don't know where to put more golems. I guess in food production? Maybe a grill? I could put them in a grill. Let them keep making grilled potatoes. Although there's not that many potatoes in the district. I don't think there's any point in putting them in a farmhouse either. I guess grist mills? Although then again, there's going to be no power. There's no point in putting them in, a, in an engine here. If there's not going to be anything working right because the golem will just consume lugs working the engine overnight so if i if i maybe wait until we get another golem i can put one golem working this engine one golem working that grist mill and then we have a full i guess production cycle except for the wheat but there's plenty of that oh man oh man i i am kind of here for this <laughs> i am i am i am kind of uh I'm kind of excited about this. <laughs> it's, it's, there's a lot of things I can do right now, and I'm, uh, I'm here for it. I'm definitely, definitely here for it. I also really like the idea of the golems working in smelters. There's something about that that's pretty cool. Actually, you know what I am going to do? I am going to unlock the ability for golems to work in the golem assembler. It's 10,000 science, which is a lot, but... What I can do, I mean, these guys, I don't think there's any beavers actively working here, but I think these just keep running until the fuel is out. So basically, I mean, this guy, oh, he's recharging. Look at him. They actually recharge pretty quickly as well, which is really cool. Uh, but basically, that means that once this guy, yeah, so this guy is just going to work around the clock to assemble beavers, which is kind of amazing. And so... I mean, that says to me that maybe having another control tower down here wouldn't be a bad idea, especially since... Wait, can I just put it... Can I just put it up there? It looks ridiculous, admittedly, but it'd be kind of cool. Or I could put it in the middle, or I could sort of put it back here. It doesn't really matter where I put it is what I'm, what I'm thinking here, but it also kind of does because I want it to look kind of interesting. So, I don't know, maybe right there, maybe right there. It really, it, this, this, putting this thing somewhere that really doesn't matter. What if we just do something stupid? What if I do, I don't know, this and then a platform and then the control tower on the platform? That looks ridiculous, but I also kind of love it. So that's what we're going to do. But yeah, this, this right here. So we have a golem making golems. That's, that's kind of a big deal. That's, that is actually kind of a big deal. Now, in other news, the drought has ended. It is now the start of cycle 19, which is lovely. So power is going to return to the Iron Isles. We should see metal production pick up again over here. I have also built another farmhouse because I don't think all of this harvesting was actually being done. So hopefully now it will be. And hopefully things will speed up a little bit there. Hopefully this control tower gets built in no time at all as well and we actually do have i think uh one unemployed golem we have four of them now in fact no we have five of them five golems four of them employed one of them unemployed i'm not really sure where to put the unemployed golem right now to be totally honest with you i've got absolutely no idea i could put him in a bakery but i don't think there's much point i could put him in hauling that would be an option or building or I mean, what if I, what if I put him, what if I made him a lumberjack? That would be an option. Although he'd only work at certain times. But if I had like this lumberjack as a golem, he could just be chopping down trees all night. Or I could make him an inventor. That would be, oh wait, only beavers can do that. Never mind. I guess I don't need to do that. I don't need him to be an inventor. I could put him in a grill. That would be an option. 
put them in a grill, have them just keep making grilled potatoes through the night. Although there's not that many potatoes in this district, which is a problem that I've been well aware of this entire time. So maybe I'm just being a bit of an idiot on that one. I don't know. I, I really don't know where to put them. I guess we hold off until this other golem here is done. He's 50% of the way there. So wait until this one's done and then we'll put a golem in the engine and we'll put a golem in the grist mill and that'll be fantastic. Or, I mean, I could just put them in a grist mill out here, because thinking about it, the water wheels don't stop spinning. I don't know why I'm relying on an engine, to be honest. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Let's, uh, let's do that. 750, we'll put a golem in the grist mill. And so now we have perpetual flour production, we have perpetual baking, and eventually we'll just have golems working everywhere. This is, uh... This is kind of wild. I need 5,000 science to put a golem in a golem part factory. But honestly, once we do that, there's no stopping me. So whenever a golem is affected by a control tower, they get plus 90% working speed and plus 60% movement speed. Now that does drop back down when they are out of range of a control tower, but that's actually kind of wild. Is, is what that is. And control towers, again, they just consume science. Now, the problem with that is obviously that it means we need a considerable amount of science production, which is something that we're obviously working towards. And this engine is going to help with that. But I think, I, I guess what we're really going to need to do is try and create maybe a not a dis- well, I wonder if I could. I, I guess I can probably connect power across districts, and so if I did that, if I could make like a dedicated power production district, that would be kind of cool, because then we can just sort of move that power out with the power shafts to wherever it needs to go, and in theory, we could just connect up a bunch of, uh, like a bunch of these guys, right? A bunch of number crunchers. So that, I mean, that'd be kind of cool. It would definitely be kind of interesting. Uh, we do have a golem here with no power, which is a bit of a problem. So let's see. I do have some charging stations in uh, in progress here. So we'll try and prioritize this one so that we can hopefully get a little charging station here nearby where the golems are working. And that should help us out a little bit. We do have a single charging station down here, which is getting used. The golems absolutely do love coming down here and using this charging station. And we'll see right here. You know, there he goes using his little charging station. But I think having one nearby the, the Golem workplace probably makes a bit more sense. You know, I will say, I'm also thinking it might not be a terrible idea at some point, maybe some point soon, to put Golems into the distribution posts, because then that way we can have the Golems go out and, I guess, well, what would we have them do? I guess we would have them just distributing things all night, which would be really, really interesting and really, really cool. We also apparently have an incapacitated golem right now, which means there's a golem vacancy. I guess it's this one counts as incapacitated because he's recharging. And then once he's done recharging, wait, no, we still have an incapacitated golem. Hold on a minute. What? No available workers in district. That's fine. Golems. What's what's going on here? Where are you? No, I don't want to enter a new name. I want to see where you are. So you're here. He's not incapacitated. He's just out of energy. He's just a bit tired. He's just a sleepy boy. All right. Well, I guess I guess that's fair enough. They do seem to... I mean, they don't need to recharge every day, so I guess it's not necessarily the end of the world if the golems get a little bit tired. So, eh, it's, it's not too bad. He can recharge here at the very least, which is fine. And, you know, that's right next to all the workplaces. So, again, that's fine. He'll get himself situated and everything should be good. So, yeah, food production in District 1 is now partially run by robots, which is really, really cool. But anyway, it has once again come to that point of the video where I have to say that that is going to do us for today. This is a bit of a longer episode than I was planning to have, but I didn't expect to make robots today. So that was very, very cool, and I'm very, very happy about that, and it's giving me ideas. I'll be honest, I wasn't really too sure what my end goal was going to be for Timberborn, but... Uh, yeah, the idea of trying to replace massive chunks of my population with robots sounds kind of amazing, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know at which point I can successfully do that. I'm really not too sure. But I guess when it comes down to it, all I really need is 
some kind of perpetual... Well, I need power. I need some kind of perpetual system to get scrap metal, turn that into metal blocks, and then turn that into golem parts. I just need golems getting all my resources, basically. And once I've done that, my beavers are kind of obsolete. Which is a bit of a weird thought, and to be quite honest, I have to imagine, although I might be completely wrong, and if I am wrong, then do feel free to let me know, I have to imagine there's probably some systems in the game which are like, hey, you can't replace every single beaver. There are certain things, for example, where you can't, you know, for, for example, the, uh, the research can't be done by a golem, but at the same time, you don't need research if you have number crunches, so... Maybe, maybe this is kind of the end goal of the Iron Teeth Beavers is to be replaced by Golems. If it is, then that's really cool. And if it isn't, then I totally understand. But regardless, Golem production's really cool. I'm so pleased that we have it up and running. It just looks so neat. It's, it's so cool. Anyway, I'm going to keep ranting and raving about all this if I don't stop myself. So that is going to do us for today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.